Hey Doc, it's Nick. I am doing a video recording to try to show you um, what my thoughts are on this patient. So this patient had endo done, you had said about 20 years ago, uh, presented with some, some symptoms on chewing, uh, essentially just uh, sensitivity to uh, function. So one of the first things I, I look at, I come over to the arch view, and what I like to do is bring this focal trough to use a term from panoramic radiography, uh, perpendicular to the, to the roots. So something like this here. So that I can take this green line and scroll it back and forth. And what I'm gonna see here is an orthogonal view uh, to the periapical image. So we have periapical images which give us some information, but a lot of times this image gives us uh, deeper insight. So first thing, I'm looking at the mesial roots. The fills look good, but right about here we start to see widening of the PDL. And we also see a little, looks like a fistular sinus tract coming out the buckle. That may or may not be clinically significant at this point in time, but it is, it looks like it's trying to drain. So my guess is if you looked in that area you would probably see something. Uh, and then coming over to the distal root, this root actually looks really good. Looking at the lamina dura here, if you see lamina dura surrounding the apex of an endo endodontically treated tooth, things look good from a biological perspective. Now you can still have vertical roof fractures and other things, but before we get to that, um, I'm also just taking a look at where the bone is in relation to the crown of the tooth. So I'm coming across here, and I don't really see any deep buccal or lingual troughs. You know, sometimes you'll see bone loss all the way down here in vertical with vertical root fractures. So I don't really see anything uh, in that view. So that's really my go-to when it comes to looking at CAT scans, because it's this image that you can't see with a panoramic or a periapical or a bite wing. Uh, but the other image is this, you know, coronal view or sky view, eagle's eye view. Um, and we can see things that sometimes get us excited uh, but aren't really much of anything. So this view right here is this orange line. So that's currently the uh, level that I'm at. So if I scroll up and down, I use this view a lot to, to see if there's additional canals. Uh, but in this case here, what we're trying to do is gain a better sense of uh, what might be going on in the image that you sent me. So you sent me an image that looks like All right, so you sent me an image like this and you had made the comment that there was potentially frication involvement. Now, what I think that is, is this guy right here is essentially just an area of cancellous bone that has very little mineralization or mineral density. You know, we, we can see these all over the place. Um, there might be some pathologic nature to these, so I don't want to say they're innocuous all of the time. Uh, but in reality, if that was an infection, I would expect to see a probing or bone loss of the buccal plate or something along those lines. So that in and of itself is not concerning, and that's what was happening when you took this image here. So one thing that's helpful, if you come over to the, um, again, we're in the R section. If you click on x-ray, it gives you a, a more familiar appearance to the situation. All right, so if, if that was actually frication involvement, we would see a lot more radiolucency in this area on this image, which is essentially a composite image of all of the slices from here to here. Hey, Rep, 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 come. Sorry about that. Come here, buds. So um, I'm not worried about that frication involvement, but just to be thorough, is that a continuation of the periapical radiolucency? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this image and then go down, and it kind of disappears. You know, I, I get very good um, bone fill in this area. If that was a vertical root fracture, as we progress down, we would start to see more and more uh, radiolucency. It's not until we get to 
here that we actually see the bona fide radiolucency associated with the root, which is a periapical issue. We can see the frication, or sorry, the fistula tract draining out this way. Uh, so I think this is a really straightforward um, retreatment for the endodontist. I'd be curious if they treat all the canals based on the fact that the distal is so healthy. My guess is they're probably just going to treat the two mesials and call it good. Um, as far as recrowning the tooth, I, I would ask the endodontist to see what their thoughts are based upon what they see when they get in there. Um, my guess is they're probably going to say just keep the original crown unless there's some sort of biological reason of um, uh, biologic width impingement or you know overhang or something like that that you can see clinically that we can't see here. So hopefully this helps. This is um, you know a really good skill to have in diagnosis. As you can imagine, without the CAT scan, who knows what we would have come up with. Uh, but I'm very confident with this diagnosis and this patient getting um, a new lease on their tooth. Have a good day.